everyone, and welcome to Cargo Transportation Masterclass, a fresh start for shippers globally after coronavirus. Today is a special day because it is a special masterclass dedicated to leadership, dedicated to sales, and to the mindset. And it's with great, great, great pleasure, I introduce to you today Ken Joslin who is a founder of Ken Joslin Group, is business owner with extensive experience across the United States and globally. He can coaches entrepreneurs um, uh, globally as well and is an amazing human being. And I'm very happy to have you today with us, Ken. Lena, thank you so much. Excited to be with you guys and excited to spend some time with you together today. Fantastic. Ken, as you know, cargo transportation industry uh, has felt on its knees. For leaders, it's extremely difficult to get back on track, to anticipate the future, and we need your guidance, we need your uh, coaching and tough love, you know, how the leaders can prepare uh, to bounce back faster. Before we start, uh, uh, <coughs> please share your experience, why leadership is much more important today than ever before. Well, leadership in crisis is always the most important thing. And literally, this is not, as we talked the other day, this isn't just a, an incident that's hit an area of where I live in the United States or an area of where you live in Europe or an area in Canada or South America or Asia. This is, this is a global pandemic. This is something that, that the, the entire, our entire planet is experiencing. And now more than ever, is the, there, is a, there is a high level need for people to lead. There is a high level need for people to lead with strength, for people to lead with calm, and people to lead with a sense of direction. Because there, there are people out, that you, your, your, your clients, your customers, your employees, your C-level suite executives, there are people looking for leaders. They're looking, who do I follow? I need direction on where I'm going to go. So leadership now, leadership in crisis is always, is always the most important need in any crisis, whether it be wartime crisis, whether that be financial crisis, whether that be global pandemic crisis, which is what we're facing now. Exactly. Nobody wants to follow freaked out leader and they want. <laughs> no, and I'll tell, you one th I'll tell you one thing. I've got a good friend of mine that worked for John Maxwell for years, and he said this over and over in the past couple of months. I've heard Nate say this. There are a lot of people talking, but a lot of people who don't have a lot to say. There are a lot of people talking, but don't really have much to say. They're just talking to talk, but yes. either don't have the experience or don't have the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to help people through this unbelievable time of uncertainty. So true. And speaking about talking, how leaders should communicate now with their employees and, and in particular with their customers? Okay, well, I, I mentioned those three things. Number one, people are looking for people to lead with strength. Yes. Um, so you have to be strong right now more than ever. You have to be um, assured of where you're going. Even if on the inside, Lena, you're not 100% sure. People are looking for leaders to lead with strength. They're looking for leaders to lead with calm. So your countenance, the way that you communicate, even the way you communicate in your emails and through your text messages and through your DMs on social media, the way you communicate face-to-face, one-on-one, which we're not doing a lot of team meetings right now because of what we're going through, but the way you communicate in your Zoom calls, they're looking for leaders to lead with a sense of calm. And the third thing they're looking for right now is they're looking for leaders to lead with a sense of direction. Like they're look like, give me some direction. Let me, let me under, let me understand that you know where we're going and, and I will follow you where you're going. And I would probably add one more thing to that, Lena, right now for, for uh, companies and em employers, you know, if you're a CEO, a business owner today, um, I think you need to lead with a sense of transparency. I think, Ready. I think people need to feel your heart and the weight in the, some of the decisions that you are, have already made or the decisions you're going to have to make because leadership in times of crisis is needed more than ever before. And also leadership in times of crisis, you're going to have to make tough decisions. And people understand that. 
But I think when you lead with your heart and you lead with transparency, it's easier for people to receive and understand why you made the decision that you made. Yes, and they also understand why you can, cannot fulfill, why you cannot perform at your best levels, but they, are, they appreciate your openness. Right, a, a, a and thousand percent. Open. Yeah, yeah. One of the things, let me say this real quick, Lena. One of the things that we're doing at, at, at the Ken Johnson Group and Johnson Coaching is, is literally we're on an economic downturn. Yes. So the, the reality of it is, is once we're through this pandemic, if it's four weeks, if it's six weeks, if it's eight weeks, we're, we're going to see the, the upswing back in the economy because the economy has been climbing and climbing and climbing now for about four, four and a half years. We're going to see the economy begin to climb. It's important as, as, as business owners, entrepreneurs, CEOs, C-level executives to, to add value to our teams right now more than ever before because what it does is it it is a foundational building moment right now where we are that if your business not only survives this economic downturn you can build foundationally by adding value transparency um, having solid core values in your company to yes. where when you do that that foundation will allow you when the economic the economic upswing happens which is going to happen it's going to allow you to grow faster and, and, and more than you've ever grown before. Talk to us about importance of company culture. Ooh, company culture is number one. I've got a book right here on my, on my desk from Patrick Lencioni called The Ideal Team Player. Um, Pat is one of my favorite um, authors. Him and Simon Sinek are, are probably my two favorite guys as far as leadership culture goes. Um, I listened to a podcast, an entree leadership podcast that my good friend Ken Coleman did probably two years ago with Pat. And when he asked Pat, he said, what percentage of, of organizations do you think have healthy cultures? And I was shocked when Pat, when Pat Lencioni said 15%. I was literally, I've listened to that podcast a hundred times in the last couple of years, because that's the thing that motivates me as we coach businesses and business owners and business leaders and business teams at Jocelyn Coaching. It really is a, I have a passion to help leaders develop healthy cultures. So yeah. what, what's, a, what's a healthy culture look like? You may walk into a, a board meeting or a staff meeting, a team meeting, and in healthy cultures, you may walk into there and you may sense tension. You may sense back and forth yes. because, because they understand, and this is, this is a principle we've had in, in, in my leadership, whether it's been in in a business or whether it's been in a ministry or nonprofit um, sector, we've always had this one saying, it's not about who's right, it's about what's right. So when you walk into healthy organizations, you may see what looks like to be friction and confrontation, but in a healthy organization, the people at the table who are making decisions understand that the decision of where the company is going to go far outweighs my need to be right. And so, so that, is, that is one of the most, especially, again, anytime we're in a season of crisis or uncertainty like we are now, it is, it, it is imperative that if our, our, we don't have healthy corporate culture, that right now we start. And that comes with transparency from the leader going, hey, guys, I haven't led you as well as I should have. But here's how we're going to move forward from this, from this day forward. Here's what it's going to look like. And it's fantastic opportunity and timing as the business volume slow down. Now leaders, they can really catch up on personal development. You, you, you have time. Like this is the season. We start our new online coaching two weeks from today. And our entire online coaching for Jocelyn Coaching that we're doing is how to seize the opportunity for your business post COVID-19. We're going to talk about mindset, massive action. We're going to talk about the three things. We're going to talk about passion. We're going to talk about intentionality. We're going to talk about focus. And right now, more than ever, you have time. Because most businesses, especially all non-essential businesses, they're either operating out of their home. I'm operating out of my podcast studio in my office in my home today. Because literally, I'm, I'm restricted on travel and movement and where I can go. I've got clients around the country that I can't go see. So what am I doing? We're holding Zoom calls. But culture right now more than ever is the most important thing. And now that we have time, man, get into, get into books. Get into books like Patrick Lencioni. 
get into 10x rule by grant cardone like read be readers be learners be people who constantly are working to develop myself raise as john maxwell said raise your leadership capacity that's one of the things yes. in our online our online coaching that we're going to talk about is how do i raise my leadership capacity in the midst of all this uncertainty so true. Ken, before we start speaking about uh, how to take massive action, um, as you know, cargo transportation industry has very thin margins and we work on volumes and in a high pace uh, business environment. That's why people very often and business owners very often tend to, tend to look for outside investment instead of mm -hmm. taking massive action because they think, no, no, margins are already thin and there is nothing to be made. When you share with your employees and with the people you coach, what, how do you explain massive action? What is it? So massive action, when I talk about Grant's book, um, I'm a Cardone licensee. When I talk about Grant Cardone's book, The 10X Rule, the, the 10X principle is, is a mindset. One of the things that I, that I uh, share a lot, one of my favorite quotes that's on my Instagram page is, is if I need an alarm clock to get out of bed, my goals aren't big enough. Like, like what am I going it. after? Like, like what am I chasing? Like literally this morning in my, in my planner, the first thing I did this morning is I write my goals down. I write my goals down three, three different times. Number one, I write them down every morning. I write them down every evening and I write them down every time I have a, a setback every time. So right now, guess what? Every business is, every business is experiencing setbacks yes. last week. So I do commercial and residential real estate last, last year. I finished seventh out of 3,725 agents. I finished in the top half of 1% in the fastest growing real estate company in the United States of America is what I finished last year. Last week on Wednesday, Wednesday morning, I emailed over to, I had a commercial property that was closing on Thursday, $1.35 million. My commission on that deal was just under $40,000. I mean, for some people, that's a salary for an entire year. That, that's, a, that's a large commission yes. for us. Wednesday morning, I emailed over my wiring instructions to my attorney. We were closing on Thursday afternoon. Well, Wednesday afternoon, I get a call from the attorney. He goes, Ken, I got bad news. He goes, listen, we've had some, we've had some trouble. Um, my client was buying a building location that was a, a, a fast food restaurant, and the franchise was not going to renew the franchisee lease for the person who was leasing the building back from my client. Therefore, it made our whole deal, it was, a, it was a hand grenade right in the middle of our deal. It blew it up. So what did I do when I had that setback? I picked up, I picked up my planner and I wrote my goals down again. What I did was I said, listen, I don't have time. I don't have time to sulk. I don't have time to say, me oh my, what am I gonna do? I've lost this. No, I said, you know what? I'm gonna write my goals down because what it does is, it recalibrates and it's a, it, it is a, I'm setting the barometer. I'm setting, I am setting the thermostat of what my day is going to look like. I tell leaders all the time, there are two types of leaders. Well, really there's only one type of leader, but there's, there's two types of what people try to portray as leaders. There's either thermostats or there's thermometers. Okay. A thermometer does what? It tells me the temperature of a room. A thermostat does what? it gives me the opportunity to change the temperature in the room. So what kind of leader are you or what kind of leader do you want to be? I want to be, I want to be a type of leader. I, I want to be a thermostat. I want to be able to walk into a room, to walk into my team, to walk into my business, to walk into one of the businesses that I coach. And I want to instantly be able to change the temperature in that room. So as a leader, do I have the ability in my company to walk into a room and, and this goes back to people are looking for three things. People to lead with, with a sense of, of strength, a sense of calm, and a sense of direction. When I go into, when I go into my team, if, whether now it's probably going to be on a Zoom call, and I lead my team through this time of, of uncertainty and global pandemic, regardless of what industry you're in, what happens is I, I, I'm a thermostat. Like I literally change the temperature. People's countenance has changed. People's belief in what we can do in a, as a company change. Yes. And then when that changes, what follows? When my heart shifts, then my mindset begins to shift. I, we can do this. You know what? We, we can get through. It's going to be hard. Don't tell your company or your employees it's going to be easy because it's not going to be easy. 
but it is possible. It is, it is, it definitely is possible. So, so basically, that's how mindset and massive action work. So listening to you, I come to conclude conclusion that action brings motivation and not vice versa. Exactly right. You know, I can be motivated by my goals. Like, like in my, in my planner, I write down my, I write down my, my goals and they're yearly goals. Some of them are two months goals. Some are six month goals. Some of them are goals. And then I have, and then I have targets like, like, where do I want to be? So one of the things I'm doing is I've stepped outside of being a solopreneur in the real estate industry. And now um, I'm, I'm building a team of real estate agents in the Atlanta area in the Birmingham, Alabama metro area. So I'm building two separate teams right now. So my goal is to have 20 agents on my team by June the 1st. So I set that goal back the first of the year. So I've got five months. So that means every month I've got to add four agents. Yes. So if I'm four months into my process and I've only added three agents, guess what I'm not going to hit? I'm not going to hit my target. So what massive action is, we never lower targets. When we don't hit a target, we never lower targets. We always increase activity. Grant Cardone, Grant actually had me on his Instagram live this morning. I didn't know. I was on the treadmill getting my workout in and Grant got on live. So I click it and I'm treadmill, treadmill, treadmill. And Grant's talking and talking. And next thing I know, boom, Grant's inviting you in. And I'm there on the treadmill, sweating, sweating, sweating. He goes, hey, brother Ken, how you doing? I said, dude, I'm on the treadmill sweating my tail off. And he was like, tell me how you're doing in my business. And I said, Grant, I'm doing exactly what? you've been teaching people to do for 10 years. If we don't hit targets, we don't lower targets, we increase activity. That, that is the definition of massive action. Listen, if you're a business owner out there today and before your sales team had to make 50, 100, 150 calls to get the level of business now, you might as well almost 10 X that you, you need to know now you're going to probably have to make 500 calls to every 100 calls before, probably even to get less business than you got before. But this is only a season. And if you will do that and every one of those calls, find a way to add value to your clients. When we get through with this downturn and we hit and the economic recession is done and we begin to make the, the climb up, which we will. And I think it's going to be faster than people think it will be. When we do, your, your company is going to grow at, at, at record pace. Amazing. What would you say to these business owners who tell that um, today nobody wants to buy their product? Uh, that's why they don't have idea how to add value. Oh, um, right now people are people are holding on to money, but they just are. That they're holding on to money. Um, one of the things that I've learned from Cardone, you and from Grant is, you know, when people like we role play, so like we're launching our new online coaching how to seize the opportunity for your business post COVID-19. So I had a call with four of my salespeople yesterday and we role played what those conversations looked like. Hey, Ken, you know what? That's a lot of money. Hey, Lena, you know, you know what? You're right. $1,200 for three of your employees to join our online coaching. That is a lot of money, but you know what? That $1,200 is just going to be an investment. And do you believe that Ken is going to be able to add value that's going to recoup not only that $1,200, but even more money in the future. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, we, we do believe that. that yes. You know, we do agree. $1,200 is, is, is a pretty steep investment right now. I, I think you just have to use that same kind of verbiage. When somebody goes, man, Lena, that's a lot of money. We don't go, Oh no, it's not a lot of money right now. For some companies, a hundred dollars is a lot of money. Yes. For some companies, ten thousand dollars is a, whatever wasn't a lot of money six weeks ago is now a lot of money. So in, in that, in that sales training, it's just agree. Yeah. You know what? Hey, Lena, that, that is a lot of money, but Hey, listen, now is not a season to retract, but now is a season to advance and the businesses that have the mindset and I'm not saying be foolish, but the business that have the mindset of, Hey, you know what? We're, we're not going to retreat. We're going to advance. Like we're going to grow when you have that. And you believe the product that you have to offer, whether it be shipping, whether it be the container business, whether it be the real estate business, whether it be retail, whatever your business is in, if you believe that your product can add value and help your client achieve what they're trying to achieve, then you know what? You're not really selling. You're not really pitching. You're passionately presenting like, hey, this is how we can help you. This is how we can, you know, yeah, that is a lot of money, but this is what it's going to do for you. Do you agree that at the end, it's not 
really money conversation. It's much more value conversation, even in during yeah. pandemic times. It's okay. So I, I tell my real estate team this all the time. So I had, so I had Sean Whalen on my Instagram live just a little while ago. I don't know if you guys know who Sean is, but it was straight fire earlier. I had Sean on earlier. And one of the things we talked about on there was, as Sean was sharing, I, I took a, a couple seconds out of the 30 minutes we were together. And one of the things I tell my team all the time on my real estate side, any business that I run, I tell them this, if you will look at your clients, for as two things. Number one, people that I can add value to and people that I can build relationship with versus the, the, the normal traditional mindset of I look at my clients as transactions. I've got an award right here on my desk. This is, um, this is my award I got two weeks ago for finishing seventh out of 3,725 agents. I did, I did right at $8 million in real estate last year. So I got that award. I had one of my one of my agents that's helping me start the first agents helping me start my team here in Birmingham, and he was sitting at my desk, sitting, sitting right next to my desk the other day. And he looked and he goes, "Ken, how can I do eight million dollars next year?" I looked at him. I said, "I said, Logan, I said I've been adding value to people for twenty years. I have constantly been adding value, adding value, adding value, adding value, adding value to clients for twenty years." I didn't spend one penny last year on advertising, not one penny. I've spent not a dime on advertising. Every bit of my clientele, every bit of my business came, <clears throat> excuse me, from organic relationships that I've built over the past 20 years. <clears throat> one thing I do, I do every day, these are simple. These are thank you cards. A thank you card and a pen, I'm telling you right now, in, 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 <clears throat> excuse me, in this economic time of uncertainty, Pick up a thank you card. One, Grant had me on um, our mentorship call the other night and actually came to me and said, Ken, what are you doing right now? Again, in front of all the mentors, uh, a thousands or a couple thousand. And I said, I said, let me tell you one thing we're doing is I made a list of everybody that I've closed a deal with over the last three and a half years that I've been back in full-time real estate. I made a list and I'm making personal phone calls to them. Hey, Lena, this is Ken from the Ken Dawson it. team. Hey, this is Ken from the Ken Dawson team. Hey, listen, I just want to let you know, um, number one, thanks for being um, thanks for having a relationship with us and trusting us in your real estate needs. Hey, I'm not calling this. I'm not calling for any purpose today, just to let you know that we're here for you. If you need anything through this time of uncertainty, I just want you to know our team's here for you. If there's anything we can do, we just want to let you know we're here. Thank you so much for, for being in relationship with us and being one of our clients. It's so powerful what you say, yeah. not only to ensure future transactions, but much more importantly to show your human side. Yes. But again, now more than ever, if you're a C-level executive, you better lead. You, if, you don't, if you don't lead with your heart and you lead with your balance sheet, you're going to be in trouble. If you don't lead with your heart and you lead with your balance sheet right now, you're going to be in trouble. Because people see through balance sheets. They see through all. Of, and not that... And, and not, Lena, not that you don't need to make decisions because of your balance sheet. That, that's not what I'm saying. There are decisions that need to be made from your balance sheet and your P&L and your cash of flow course. and those things right now. But if you don't lead with your heart and you lead with your balance sheet, you're going to be in trouble in this season. Do you believe that it will be easier to survive pandemic for uh, the, these companies who have a market product fit but weak leader? or the ones who still struggle with their product, but leader is willing to, to make the difference? Well, I think, I think everything, as John Maxwell says, everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. Um, if you don't have, Pete, listen, and, and this is another thing that, that, that uh, I love what Grant says all the time. Listen, people don't buy the best product. Number one, they buy because somebody gets there first and because of relationship. So if, you, if you've got weak leaders, but you've got a great product, you're still going to sell, but you're not going to be as productive in what you sell or the amount you sell as a company who may not have as strong a product, but has a strong leader. Because one of the words that I've heard all over the place and that we've used um, at the Johnson Group as well is strong leaders understand when they need to pivot. Yes. How, how can I pivot right now? 
what does this look? So, for example, we had a live event in Atlanta, Georgia, at the John Maxwell Leadership Institute on May the 15th. Myself, um, Richie Dolan, um, who works for Grant Cardone. Richie has, um, Richie has um, spoken with Michelle Obama, Barack Obama, George Bush, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton. He just opened for Ellen in her Super Bowl special she did in Miami. Richie's a dear friend of mine. Um, Richie's got two NBA championship rings as being a staff member with the Miami Heat. So with, with these guys, we're about to do a live event in Atlanta. Another good friend of mine, David Pollack, who's on ESPN's College Game Day, the most widely watched show in America. I mean, it's college football's huge in, in, in America. David's an ex-NFL player and a real good friend of mine. We were doing this event May the 15th. Well, guess what? We can't do a live event May the 15th. We were going to kick our online coaching groups up at that event. That was going to be the ta-da, now yeah. we're launching into, and we're going to launch our online coaching thing May the 15th. Well, we've had to push that event on down the road to a minimum of June the 26th, and we may not be able to get it there. So what do we do? We pivoted. I got my team together. Okay, guys, I've already got several tens of thousands of dollars invested in this event. It's not going to, we can't do it May the 15th. So how do we pivot? So what we've done is, okay, no, number two things. Number one, how can we pivot? And how yes. can we add value? How can we add value? Listen, now is not a, to a time to just make noise. There's so much noise out there. And that's the one thing about having Sean Leyland on my Instagram live today. Dude, you're talking about a voice of authenticity. You're talking about a voice of genuineness. That's what people want to hear. So we just didn't put an online coaching a, a proposal or thing together for people to, hey, come grow your business. Come do this. You know, learn how to have a healthy culture. No, we put an online coaching group together for business owners, entrepreneurs, and even solopreneurs that says, hey, how to seize the opportunity for your business post-COVID-19? How can I prepare right now for when this whole thing is over and the economic, it starts to tick upwards? How can I prepare so my business will not only survive, but my business will thrive? So we have to be people who are willing to pivot. So great leaders always outweigh great products. Absolutely. Ken, you have been sharing uh, um, loads of wonderful insights and I'm sure that our audience uh, have been taking uh, notes. If I asked you the last question, what uh, leaders in cargo transportation industry should do to use this time effectively for their business and personally? Yeah, I, th I think number one, because you have time, um, I, I think you have to assess where you truly are. I, I think I think what's happening, I think one of the biggest problems in the world right now is we have literally walked along and said there's a facade or a mask, if you will, that says I'm okay, my company's okay, we're okay, everybody's okay, and then the reality of it is is our marriages are not, are not okay. Our relationships with our coworkers are not okay. Again, Patrick Lencioni says 15%, 15% of corporations around the world are, have healthy culture. Okay, if my, if my culture is not healthy, what do I need to do to get it healthy? Pay the price right now in order to develop healthy culture. Build the foundational things, it's like this. Um, it, it's, and I can't really draw cause I don't have a screen. I've got my whiteboard, but it's not up right now. It, it's like, if you, if you build a building and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this for you guys, I, I hope, I, I, hope have, this works. I have notes as well. Go ahead. If, if, if you, if you build a building, I'm going to try to find a piece of paper to draw on here. I'll do it on this right. Now. If you, if you build a building and I'm going to draw this out and I'm going to stick it up there. Mm -hmm. If you build a, if you build a one story building, can you see that? Okay. Yes. You yes, build a one story building. You've got to dig the foundation doesn't have to be that, that deep, but you've got spots in the foundation that you need to fix underneath. Well, you know what? Guess what? If you want to build a three story building, what do you have to do? You've got to dig deeper in the foundation to make sure the foundation is more solid. So the, the taller you build the building, the digger, the deeper you have to dig in your foundation, to make sure the foundation is good and solid, the taller you want to build or the bigger you want to build. So right now is a time to 
dig. Dig deep into your own life. Dig deep into your own leadership capabilities. Ask yourself the, t- uh, the tough questions. Listen, you, you want to know who will answer? You want to know who will be honest and real with you? Go ask your spouse what, what, how, how good of a leader you are. Ask your children how great of a leader you are. Ask, ask trusted employees and let them know, hey, Lena, I'm going to ask you a question. And my, your job's not on the line, but I need you to be honest. Hey, how well am I leading in this area? Fill in the blank. How well am I leading in this area? Fill in the blank. And get some feedback from some people who are going to give you honest feedback. Uh, the other thing I would say, and I know we said this the other day in our conversation is, find, if you're a five to $10 million transportation company, find a 50 to $100 million transportation company. You want to 10X and grow your business? Find someone that's 10 steps further down the road than you are. Call them. Because guess what we all have right now? We have time. Yes. Call them. Hey, listen, man, I, I'll, I'll give you, we can't fly somewhere, can't drive somewhere to go have lunch. But hey, listen, man, I'll, I'll send you $100 if I can get 30 minutes to, to an hour of your time on a Zoom call. I'll send you 250 bucks. I'll send you 500 whatever it takes. Hey, listen, I, I know your company. You're doing $25 million, I'm doing $5 million. I, I've got, and this is what I said the other day too as well, great leaders ask great questions. Oh, yes. L- learn to ask great questions. So what can you do right now in this time of uncertainty as a leader? You can find other leaders that are five, 10 steps ahead of you and build relationship with them and learn to ask great questions. Not only, Lena, do great leaders ask great questions, great leaders recognize great questions. And so when you ask great, a great leader a great question, they go, oh, who cool. needs to deal? Yes, they didn't get to $50 million on accident or 100 million, 200 million, they didn't get there on accident. So they're not going to waste their time with you if they don't think if what I'm giving you is not going to be put into practice, I'm not going to waste my time with you. I'm going to give my wisdom and my knowledge and my understanding of what I do to people that are going to run with what I give them so that I can help them and add value to you. Love it. Love it. Every piece of information you share with us, I love it. And I adore you as a leader. And I'm sure that our audience have been taking notes. And this ends up and wraps up our special masterclass. Ken, I know that you have a free gift to offer. What is it? Yeah, so we're doing actually doing a webinar tonight. It's actually at 8.07 p.m. Eastern time, which is New York time. Um, we're doing a webinar tonight. And this may not... Um, this may not fit for people that are outside of the United States, but what we are doing tonight on our Grow Stack Drive webinar is we are bringing in business professionals from around the United States. We're bringing in um, SBA loan specialists from Wells Fargo. We're bringing in business owners who have already walked through this whole disaster relief stimulus bill. And I'm bringing in CPAs to be able to help business owners and 1099 employees understand what part of the stimulus bill and this this whole 2.3 trillion dollar bill that we just passed that president trump passed to be able to put money back into our economy what part of that is can i go after and then in turn doing q a and helping people ask hey i've got an s corp i'm a single employee i've got an s corp i've got five employees and i get a k1 do i do a 7a do i do a 7b do i do the cares act do i do this a payroll protection plan and that the, that the treasury department, what can I go after? So that's one thing that we're doing tonight. It's, it's free. It's growstackdrive.com. Um, you can go to the Ken Jocelyn group.com and find that as well. And then in a couple of weeks, we launch our online coaching um, platform and literally it is eight weeks. It's going to be 10, but it's eight weeks of virtual coaching where we will have hundreds of business owners from around the world where we're going to talk about how do I seize the opportunity for my business post COVID-19. We're going to talk about mindset. We're going to talk about massive action. We're going to talk about focus, intentionality, passion. We're going to talk about setting 10 X goals in your personal life, professional life, financial life. And then the last three weeks, we're going to spend time on how to develop healthy culture in our companies. And that the, which is, which is my, which is my favorite time. And literally right now, we're doing entire, you can bring your whole company, no matter how many employees you have, for $2,497 or $397 a person, which is 
insanely it is a blast it is a it's fantastic opportunity and how people can find you how we can follow you online yep instagram is at ken jocelyn k-e-n-j-o-s-l-i-n it's it's all it's right behind me on my on my step and repeat banner i'm at ken jocelyn on instagram facebook um ken jocelyn team.com ken jocelyn group.com jocelyn coaching.com growstackdrive.com literally leads everybody into the same direction but lena thank you honored honored for um to be able to just add value to what you guys are doing it's today. great pleasure thank you so much once again bye you have a good day